So um, I think I'm going to start this and then I'll turn it over to Amber. So um, when you collect a mushroom, um, you're going to want to collect it in a paper bag. Um, you don't want to put it in plastic, and I'm sure many of you already know this, but just in case, um, plastic will cause it to um, start to rot really fast. And so paper gets, you get aeration around it and, and it lasts a lot longer. Um, you can dry out your specimen there. You can use a dehydrator if you have one at home or a drying oven. Most people don't have a drying oven. Um, so a regular oven will do if you put it on the lowest temperature possible. Um, usually that's just like warm. Um, leave it on for a little bit until um, it's warm, then you can turn it off and put the mushroom in there. And you might have to turn it on a little while. Um, after that, um, a good thing to do is when you buy um, a bag of chips or something, usually it comes with a silica packet and says, you know, do not eat this. I save all of them. Um, and you can use those to dry out specimens. Um, so after I dry my specimen, I put it then in a Ziploc bag with some silica packets. Um, and I put it in plastic bag at that point because if you leave it out at, uh, in the room, um, it'll start absorbing moisture from the air. Um, and then freezing your specimen. And so if you want to start your own collection, your own personal collection, um, which you should, uh, it's good to freeze your specimens because a lot of times they have worms in them. I'm sure if you found old specimens in the field, you see that they have all these tiny little worms in them. Um, so this will kill anything that's in it and um, might decide to eat it. Uh, so you can leave it in your freezer for about a week. Um, and Amber, I think I know does that uh, for all the specimens that come into the fungarium. Okay, so I think that's all I had. Amber? So for more art for archival storage, everything that any fungi that comes to the herbarium should be completely dry um, and stable. Um, and when those things come to the collection, they are put in a minus 60 degree freezer. So quite a bit colder than, than an at-home freezer, but everything that comes into our collection is deep frozen for a full week before it can be added to the collection itself. And once those things are frozen, they are then stored in a variety of archival materials. So depending on the fungi, how big it is, I mean, you have some tiny mycena is going to be much different than a giant Ganoderma in terms of the, how you store those types of things. Um, and it'll range from archival paper packets. So these are folded packets. You can see on the left there, this is a friend of mine, uh, Patricia Miller, um, who started the fungarium at the University of Mississippi in Oxford, Mississippi. Um, if you have a chance, take a look at her collections on Mycoportal. They are amazing. Um, and she sent me some pictures, for example, because obviously we don't have much, for example, at our own collection right now. But these specimens are stored in archival paper, meaning that they have a very high cotton content and they're designed to not degrade over time. So you see some older specimens and, and paper processing historically involved a lot more acids. And so those things can degrade the paper over time. So these days, everything is done with a high cotton content and in an archival quality so that they stay the same um, and will continue to support and protect the specimens in perpetuity. So we'll either store these specimens in archival paper packets, like you see there, or other possibilities are archival boxes in a variety of sizes or archival bags, which uh, are plastic bags, but instead of being more like a Ziploc bag, like a kitchen Ziploc, kitchen Ziplocs have a bit of a, a cornstarch coating on the interior of the bags in order to keep them from sticking to one another. And that can sort of uh, get into the specimen and, and cause it to degrade. So we have archival plastic bags that do not have that addition so that the specimens are well preserved um, in perpetuity. And I don't have a, a photo for it here, but if you make a spore print, those can also be um, deposited. Oh, I see. That's a, it's a couple examples of a few spore prints. So you can deposit the spore print with the specimens and those can often be um, possibly be 
supported in glassine envelopes, which is a bit of a, a coated tissue paper so that um, it's always good to document what the spore color is. But if you have a good spore print, you can um, add those to the collection and they can be useful um, sampled from or just used as a, a, another indicator of identification for anyone interested down the line. <laughs> 